Hey guys, how are you doing? I don't know why my intros and my outros are always so awkward. I just never know what to say. Or I say too much or I say too little. I, just, I never can seem to get it right. But maybe that's just my thing. Maybe my thing is that I'm a mess. Sounds about right. So today's video, we are going to be talking about coral. I'm gonna be telling you everything I can possibly tell you about corals in 10 minutes. So we're gonna see how I do. I crack a lot of jokes in my videos normally because I think educational ones can get kind of boring, but this is an educational one, so welcome students. Ghost, what are you doing? Teach them a coral fact real quick, ghost. Okay, so yes, let's Let's begin talking about corals. So first off, we're gonna start with the difference between corals and plants. A lot of people think that corals are plants, but they are not plants. They're not related to plants. They have nothing to do with plants. So we're gonna start first by making a little chart about the differences between corals and plants. First off, corals are not plants. That's how they're different. They're not the same thing. How is that? I'm a bad teacher, this sucks. Corals are animals. They are sessile animals, which means they don't move. They sit wherever they are in life and they live their whole life in that little spot unless for some reason they become detached from their rock and they blow away and they blow away. But they don't have any choice in where they land and they don't have any choice in how to move. They cannot control their movements. They cannot go walk around. They don't have feet, they don't have legs. They are just sessile animals. Plants are plants, they're not animals. So that's their differences. Plants can make their own food using photosynthesis. Basically plants sit outside, they absorb the sunlight, and then they convert it into food. Corals can't do this, they actually have to eat. Corals actually have little tentacles. They are nocturnal hunters. They wait until the sun goes down and there's no sunlight. They put their little tentacles out and they catch different kinds of plankton and that is what they eat. So corals do eat food. They need calcium and nutrients in their life. They can't just rely on the sun for food. When you look at a coral, you just see these little moving balls of color. These are actually called polyps and every single one is an individual coral. So when you are looking at what you call a coral, you are actually looking at thousands of little corals all together in a community. All of these individual corals are called polyps and they start out as one and then they are asexual. They reproduce on their own and they create a whole little community of corals. And that's what we know, for example, as a green star polyp. When green star polyps are closed, you can definitely see each individual stem a little easier. And when they're open and flowing all around, they look like one big little, one big little? They look like one big field of grass, kind of. But they are not grass, they are an animal. Corals do have different temperaments. Some are more calm while others are more aggressive. An example of an aggressive coral is a galaxia. Galaxias have big sweeping tentacles that come out at night and they will sting other corals, they will sting anything. So this is important to know when keeping a galaxia because then you wanna keep it in your tank away from your other corals. So then all your corals are safe, it can grow, it can reach out for food without harming other corals, things like that. Corals take part in a symbiotic relationship. There is a type of algae called zoanthellae and it lives inside of corals. Corals give the zoanthellae a home and in return the zoanthellae eat the waste from the coral, keep things clean and basically keep them alive. Zoanthellae also gives coral their color so when a coral is not doing too well, if they get too warm, for example, they will release the zoanthellae and that's when they turn into this white color. This is known as coral bleaching and that is how it happens. And you can tell that a coral is unhealthy when it is all white because that means it's not healthy enough to even be homing the zoanthellae. And that means there's something that needs to be fixed. When coral bleaching takes place, it is not irreversible. All it means is that with the proper care, they can get healthier. But if you don't pay attention and you let them stay white or bleached, they will eventually die because the zoanthellae are an important, crucial part of a coral's life. And if it can't house the zoanthellae, eventually the waste is gonna build up in the coral. It's not gonna hunt for food as often because it can't maintain the waste because the zoanthellae is not there to help and the corals will end up starving and dying. Corals do actually have a skeleton and it is where all the polyps lay on it, but it is not a skeleton like ours. They're not real actual bones and if a coral dies, they leave a skeleton behind and another coral can come, land on that skeleton and build a home on it if they wanted to. The live rock that we bring home sometimes is part of a giant coral skeleton. Sometimes on live rock you can see what it was, you can kind of make out what kind of coral it was, and other times you can't really tell. But it is really interesting seeing corals grow on rocks and create a home or a skeleton out of them. 
them. Now going back between plants and corals, there's another third creature that we can compare corals to, and that's anemones. Anemones are closely related to corals, but they are not the same. Corals are sessile, while anemones can actually move. They have a foot, they can go and choose where they wanna stay, and if they aren't happy with that, they can let go and go find a new spot, rehome, and they have a mouth right in the center. They are one single invertebrate, closely related to jellyfish, while corals are the accumulation of thousands of little animals. So although corals do not need sun for food, they do need sun for the zoanthellae algae to grow. The zoanthellae algae is a plant and it relies on photosynthesis for food. So if corals don't have the proper amount of sunlight every day, the algae will die off and that leads to the corals dying. Now there's a lot of different kinds of corals, but there's three main groups, LPS, SPS, and soft corals. LPS stands for large polyp, polyp? LPS stands for large polyp stony, SPS stands for small polyp stony, and soft coral is a word, it doesn't stand for anything. SPS corals are definitely the hardest to take care of. They require extremely clean water, perfect amount of sunlight, perfect amount of flow, and in general, they are more fragile. SPS corals are long, small, long, small. Hmm, let's try that again. SPS corals are the branching coral. They are long skeletons with thousands of little tiny polyps covering the skeleton, but you can still normally clearly make out the skeleton in its form and shape. While LPS corals are lots of polyps all together, they make up kind of like a head, and then the head sits off of the little rock or skeleton that they are growing on. Now in this video, I am featuring a lot of corals that I got from Worldwide Corals. Worldwide Corals is an awesome, awesome, awesome company and they even have a subscription program where basically you pay a fee and every single month you get a package of corals and supplies for the coral. They're super cool and they actually did send me a bird's nest so here's the bird's nest that they sent me. It's beautiful. They are really, SPS corals are awesome but they're definitely harder to take care of and it's even harder sometimes if you decide to mix them in your aquarium. The reason for this is because the water differences. LPS doesn't need as much care as SPS corals need water wise. Most people don't want to try to worry about the LPS needs and the SPS needs. Also LPS corals have those big sweeping tentacles that can actually hurt SPS corals. So unless you really know what you're doing, I don't recommend mixing them. Not until you at least got a good taste of corals. A lot of practice in I'll say. Now soft corals are definitely the easiest ones to take care of. The reason these are easiest is because they are the most tolerant to all kinds of water conditions. They can really tolerate nitrates and nitrites better than LPS and SPS can, but I'm not gonna say that you can go overboard and have insanely high nitrates, ammonia, and nitrites. A lot of them can handle extremely low light and low flow, and that's another reason why they are great for beginners, is you don't have to have that expensive aquarium lighting. You can easily get a light for less than $100 that will provide for soft corals very well. Now I'm gonna take a break real quick. Well, real quick? Okay. Got a little baby voice for a second. I'm gonna take a little break real quick from this little sit down and talk right to you for back to back to back, fact after fact after fact. And we're gonna cut to some footage of me getting some coral frags from Worldwide Corals. Coral fragging is basically cutting a small piece of coral off an existing coral, putting it on a small frag or a little rock, and it grows into a whole new coral. And that's one way you can breed corals yourself. I'm gonna show you some coral frags that I got, little baby corals, and I'm gonna show you them in my tank. So we're gonna go cut to that real quick. All right, so what I've done here is I've gotten some water from my fish tank, which is right here. And then we have a bucket right here where all the corals are gonna go into. And we're going to slowly, we're gonna acclimate them basically. Hold on, let's get this. Right now they are in this water right here. And this water might be extremely different from the water that I have here. So if you throw your corals right into the new water, they may go into shock. If there's any salinity differences, and then the nitrates, nitrites, the phosphates, anything, if they are suddenly thrown into new water, they could go into shock and then they, and then they may not survive.
each coral reef that there is out there provides more home to more species of animals than any other part of the ocean that exists and they are one of the largest ecosystems in all of the world. And the thing that's really fascinating about that is coral reef, coral, coral, I cannot say it. One thing that's really fascinating about that is that coral reefs only take up less than 2% of our ocean, and yet they are more vast and contain more life than any other part of the ocean that we've discovered so far. So clearly if corals die, so many fish and so many aquatic species will die. Sea turtles, for example, eat corals. So if there's no corals, there's no sea turtles. Other animals eat sea turtles. They would die if the sea turtles died. So many types of fish, crabs, shrimp, so much would be at stake if our corals died. Corals actually are a huge part in medicine as well. They are a big part of painkillers, so they help us. So they help us stay out of pain in so many situations. And coral reefs are one of the hugest attractions in the world. It's such a huge tourism thing that if it was gone, so much money would be lost. Now there's a million more reasons why corals are so important. I'm just listing some of them because like I said, I'm trying to keep this video around 10 minutes long. I think I'm already over that, but we'll see how far I am into this. Um, coral reefs actually do protect the wetlands too. So not only is sea life in danger, but also all of the wetlands are too. The main reasons that corals are dying is from overfishing and from global warming. Yes, it's real. Global warming is a thing. The planet is heating up faster than everything else can learn to compensate for the extra heat. And corals can't handle the extra heat well. So, so many coral reefs around the world are bleaching incredibly bad. And if things aren't turned around, it will lead to all of them being wiped out. The main ways to prevent this from happening is focusing on your carbon footprint and also watch where you get your fish. Because another reason, like I said, that corals are dying is from overfishing. And I'm not saying you have to stop eating fish. I'm not gonna go on a rant telling you to be vegan. That's your choice. But just watch where you get your fish and watch where you get your seafood. Instead of going to stores like Target and Walmart and getting your fish there, go to local farmer's markets and that will help so much if everyone just did that. And that was the video. So I don't know how close I got to 10 minutes. I don't know if I failed epically or if I actually kind of got near the goal. We'll, we'll see when I'm editing it. That was the video and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about corals. And I will see you guys next week when I talk about other animal stuff, because that's what I do. Animal stuff. I love you guys so much. Thank you for 1.3 million subscribers. I don't know if I thanked you guys for that last time, but this time I'm doing it. Thank you guys so much again. I love you guys and have a good week or a few days. I don't know until I'll see you again, but it might, might be a week, might be a few days. I don't know when my next video is coming out, but <laughs> thank you guys. I love you.